Growing up in New Jersey, the state that's the most densely populated, I kind of learned from an early age that some of the most hostile environments aren't those that are untouched by man, but ones that man has had the most impact in. In high school, on a class trip, we went to the Edison Wetlands Association headquarters, who was working on toxic waste sites primarily in New Jersey at the time. Saw firsthand toxins in jars, like paint sludge that's contaminated with lead that is in people's backyards that live in communities in our state, and I really was prompted to action. So I worked my way up and eventually became program director for the Edison Wetlands Association. And an article made its way into my inbox about a community located in Indiana called Franklin. They were experiencing high rates of childhood cancer in the community. June 3rd of 2014, my stepson Zane was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Emma was diagnosed on September 5th and she passed away December 18th. And of course you ask yourself why, everybody asks themselves why, and you just kind of resign yourself to there are no good answers as to why, but it turns out there probably are. So getting started on the investigation in Franklin was a huge undertaking. We had found some databases of potentially concerning chemical sites in the area that were believed to be cleanup complete. So that's kind of where we started. And not very long after, one site in particular came into view, which was the former Amphenol Corporation site in the middle of the city. This company was discharging chemical solvents like trichloroethylene and tetrachloroethylene, and these are known as volatile organic compounds because they easily turn into vapors. The Environmental Protection Agency never directed the responsible party to fully track how far the contamination went in groundwater. We had a concern that that contamination had migrated beyond the site and potentially was even underneath homes in the residential areas. So we made the decision that if our government wasn't going to find the answers for this community, that we were going to do the work necessary and kind of take on the role of the EPA and get the community empowered with their own data. The development in Johnson County tonight, new test results reveal vapors from known carcinogens seeping into homes and even the air in Franklin. So some of the biggest aspects to this work in Franklin that we've done have included taking scientific samples of the environment and of people's homes, conducting meetings with the community to share that information, review historic site documents and uncover a, as many data gaps and potential issues there as we could, and then also engaging government agencies and elected officials and pushing them to get involved. The last thing I wanted to have to come to the community and tell them was, you know, yes, we did find contamination, but at the same time, it was breaking wide open fears and concerns that families have had for so long. So the ultimate goal is to see this through to a permanent cleanup for the communities and for any homes that have been impacted to be made whole again as well. You know, it's EPA's mission to protect human health and the environment. It's their responsibility and their job that they were entrusted by Congress to do. And it was a promise made to people in this country and that wasn't being fulfilled at the Franklin site. And we kind of broke open the question now of how many other sites across the nation are believed to be cleaned up, but are actually still haunting these communities. You know, it's not just toxic waste sites that have to be cleaned up. It's a whole system that needs to be cleaned up.